all right so uh, okay again good evening guys so uh, today is the first lecture for uh, gate aerospace 2024 and uh, we will be starting with aircraft structures all right and uh, then i'll be talking about after come 10 or 15 minutes i'll give you the basics uh, what is the syllabus uh, what books to read from where to read what all topics to refer and then once we have the understanding we'll straight away start with uh, our first unit which is basic elasticity now again this is not any uh, introduction or pre video or something it is uh, like actually we are starting this labels from now itself all right so i'll straight away go to the next slide so guys here if you see uh, i have marked this down at structures uh, this is your labels to be very precise mm. <clears throat> there are two basic parts in this one is referred to as static part and the other one is referred to as dynamic part now when i say dynamic uh, i will be explaining more detailed uh, difference between these two in coming slides but you should know one thing for sure when we talk about dynamic right we will be talking about time terms here all right so when i say time you know velocity uh, is nothing but ds by dt acceleration and hence mass will come into picture so we typically say these terms are nothing but our vibration problems when we say dynamic effects we will be talking this about as vibrations which is altogether a big unit separate unit when we don't consider anything related to time <clears throat> then we'll say it is static problem so it's simple words it is you have a system you have a structural member you apply load to it and corresponding to it you calculate stresses you calculate strains you calculate deflections you calculate energy stored all these things so nothing is related to time when we talk about static uh, systems so the major portion of your gate syllabus is static part we have seen and there are numericals i'll show you the weightage for vibration separately all right now if i'll come to static part <clears throat> if you see i have listed down as five major topics in which you have huge amount of small small sub topics present but i'll give you a very simple brief introduction what this syllabus is uh, then what is the weightage of each topic and what we all need to study in this part again this is not basics guys you should know what do you mean by structures because if you understand this labels once you read a numerical you can easily segregate that they have asked the numerical on bending or torsion or columns or theory of failures because sometime people read a numerical and they don't understand that which uh, is the topic from where i should start should i calculate reactions or should i calculate movement or should i calculate stress directly so there is some confusion in structures all right people feel this is uh, slightly tricky part so i'll give you a simple introduction before going into the static part so i'll skip these slides i'll come back to this again in structures <clears throat> you take any system any structural member all right this can be uh, the pen you are using to write your notes the notebook uh, your mobile phone aircraft wing fan anything in structures is known as a structural member which is will be subjected to a kind of a load all right external loads what you apply now if you see there are different things you can apply to a uh, structural member what you can do you can pull it you can take your pen and pull it from both the ends you can compress it correct you can simply compress it try to shrink it maybe all of us know if i take a stick and i ask you to break it what you'll do you will bend it from both the ends this is one possibility then what we can do i can take same structural member and i can provide torque to it something like this correct all these things you can do similarly you can take a system and you can heat it this is also a possibility right so what we what i'm trying to convey here is each these black member is a same thing it's a like let's imagine in your mind it is a pen which you are holding in your hand so when you apply any <coughs> axial load to the system right when you try to pull it or you try to compress it all right i'm coming to that detail now this system in structural member is known as a bar or a rod so when a numerical comes in your exam right they will say a bar is subjected to an axial load of 10 kN something like this so when they use the word bar there has to be an axial load which will be applied to the system this is the naming convention although 
as a layman person, this is the pen you're holding in your hand. But as a structural engineer, you should know that it is now known as a bar or a rod because you have applied an axial load to it. Similarly, compressive loads also, it is known as a bar or a rod. But when the length of the system is too big, right? And it fails under buckling. Now, if you know this, it's fine. I don't expect you to know what is buckling, what is crushing, all these terms now. But what I'm trying to tell you is if a system buckles in failure, then it is known as a column. Now, this compressive load can be present here also. And one spatial kind of compressive load, then the structural member is known as a column. All right. I'm not going in detail. This is very basic, guys. Now, when you have same pen holding in your hand, but you're not uh, providing a compressive load, you're not uh, providing an axial load pull, what you're doing, you're doing a bending. Then this pen is known as a beam. So numerical comes in your exam, a beam is subjected to a movement of 10 kilonewton meters, or a beam is subjected to a UDL load or a shear force of 10 newton. Then beam word should be present there. Now, same pen. I will take and I will apply torque to it. And in structural terminology, then it is known as a shaft. Now shaft, <clears throat> again, same term, a shaft is subjected to a torque of 10 kilonewton meters. All right. And when you heat a system, it can be a shaft, it can be a bar or a rod, it can be a column, it can be a beam, anything. You can additionally applying a load, you can also heat it. So thermal stresses will come into picture. All right. Now, if you club all this right and try to understand what should be the root, what should be the format. If you see, you have bending in your slabus, makes sense. Bending means beam. All right. So movements will come into picture. So you should know what will happen. Torsion, columns, all these things comes into picture. Now the axial load, if you see, this is your slabus now. So beam is considered, column is considered, shaft is considered, which is nothing but torque. Bar and rod, axial loading will be considered under basic elasticity. Now, once you know any kind of load you apply to a system, if you're in a position to calculate what is the deflection, what are stresses, what are strains, then <clears throat> basic elasticity will help you to calculate which is term known as principal stresses. Now, the reason is... <clears throat> Principal stresses are the maximum stresses acting in the system. So if you want to see, let's say I'm just taking an example. If you want to see when you apply this movement, when and where this beam will going to fail. So what you want to be very precise, you want where are the maximum stresses acting. Correct. And this beam formulas Whatever you are going to study in bending will not going to give you the maximum stresses, most of the cases. So you have to calculate maximum stresses coming from the system, which will be given by basic elasticity. So bending will give an input to basic elasticity. Torsion will give an input to basic elasticity. Column will give an input to basic elasticity. Any system will give an input to basic elasticity. And basic elasticity will do the calculations and calculate what is known as principal stresses. These are the maximum and minimum stresses acting in the system. So I know the most problematic stress where my system will fail. And now as an engineer, what we're going to do is we're going to take these principal stresses and supply it or give it to theory of failures. Now, what theory of failures will say? Theory of failures, there are different theory of failures. One misses, Triska, Rankine. So I'm not going in detail now. So what these theories will say, if this is your maximum principal stress, your structure will fail, yes or no. So this is the answer. If it is failing, as an engineer, you have to improve it. If it is passing, you say it is fine. You can fly with this wing. It's fine if you're not going to fail. So final decision and designing will be done on theory of failures. This is the reason, this is how your slabus is framed. So you should know every kind of structure. You should know how to solve any kind of structure. Once you know how to solve it, then you will convert those stresses and strains into principal stresses, principal strains. And once you know this, you can design your aircraft uh, structures. So very simple example. You have analyzed your aircraft wing. 
wing is typically a bending uh, and a bending also torsion also it's a combined so guys i have given you an example in which i have given you different cases right in real life it is not separated in real life you can have a structural member which is subjected to a pull which is subjected to a bending movement which is subjected to a torsion so this is combined effects so you need to combine all these effects and then solve and see whether your system is failing or whether your system is passing i hope <coughs> this is clear now so what i will do i will solve this numerical for axial loads case 1 i will solve it for bending loads torsion loads and i will try to add all these in a proper format which is done in basic elasticity and once you have that you go to theory of failures and start solving your system all right this is an overview of your whole syllabus so if you open uh, the pdf which i have posted on website right this labels for your 2024 structures you will find many many uh, detailed explanations uh, aircraft loads trusses and compatibility conditions equilibrium equations all these are small small topics which is coming in these major headings so if you open any standard textbook right megzen or timoshenko or bunsell or any textbook of strength of material you will find these topics there inside it there will be many subtopics i hope i'm very very much clear up till now guys give me a quick nod is this fine clear can i move ahead <clears throat> perfect okay i'll move ahead to next slide now before going further you should know right what is the weightage what they are doing in your exams so this is <laughs> very quick i will just take 2 minutes into this because my intent is to show you this part if you see this column right because this is our first i told you this is our structures month so we'll be talking only about structures as of now so it is asked for 18 marks in 2023 this is 2023 gate exam uh, this year only and this is asked for 18 marks four one mark question and seven two mark question covering around 18 marks so if you see entire subjects right this is the most heavy topic of your entire gate syllabus of all the seven subjects this is the most heavy topic uh, asked in your exam so we are talking about 18 marks within this month but believe me it is very very conceptual people only have fear for structures so if you understand what i'm trying to tell you from the basics right i really really hope it will be clear so <clears throat> this is just an overview of 2023 what has happened <clears throat> now this is detailed part so all these topics which i have already discussed basic elasticity bending torsion columns theory of failures vibration how much questions they have asked from uh, in 2023 from this so if you see there are two one mark question one two mark question from basic elasticity so ask for four marks similarly bending ask for four marks torsion one numerical column one numerical theory of failure one numerical all of two marks and then vibration two one mark question and one two mark question so weightage is 18 in the end you should know this because when you're starting your preparation from scratch from first day you should know what uh, you are preparing how many how much marks it carries and um, what all things i should study and focus more on all right now this is enough of the background what we're going to see in structures what happened last year what is the weightage and all i'll go to the uh, first unit which is basic elasticity all right now don't get fear in this if you see basic elasticity which is uh, one simple heading right you see the number of subtopics in this now it's a huge list if you see there are some 18 points in this so the intent is when you finish basic elasticity you should mark each and every point here you should know that i have finished this also i have finished this also everything so in this i have uh, included trusses which people in your syllabus it is mentioned separately loads acting on an aircraft which is mentioned mentioned separately compatibility condition so as of now i don't expect you to know these headings and i'm not also reading each and every statement it doesn't make sense why there is no point of saying thin wall pressure vessels airy stress functions you don't know this but what i'm telling you is this is the whole topic we're going to study in basic elasticity and then we'll say this topic is done now books to refer for basic elasticity are these two books definitely first priority for us for this month at least is to finish 
um, what you're going to do, you're going to see classes, you're going to see videos, and you have the material books. This is the first priority for this month. In the process, we'll be solving all the gate numericals here in class, all previous years, starting from 2007 till 2023. Whatever question they have asked from basic elasticity, we'll do that. Then <clears throat> you will log in into your test series portal. You will appear for your topic-wise test, which is uh, basic elasticity one, basic elasticity two. This is second thing. Third step is after doing small, small topics, right? I will be sharing an assignment sheet with you mm -hmm. and you will solve those assignment sheets and then we'll discuss doubts on those. So these are the three steps on every topic we're going to do. And then we'll say our structures is done when it is done for all uh, of the six uh, main topics. So I'll straight away start with this. Once these lectures are done, right, again, I'll be always coming back to this slide and marking that we have done this, we have done this, we have done this, and so on. All right. Now, this is not the books for your entire structures because there is no vibration in this. This is only for basic elasticity. And you will not read complete Megzen and complete Timoshenko and Gere. I will tell you what to read, from which book to read which page to which page makes sense for that particular topic because elastic constants are maybe good in Dimoshenko. Plane stress and plane strain conditions are maybe good in Megzen. So it depends upon topic wise. We should not read the entire textbook. Everything is combined together definitely in your material book. So this will have everything in the same format. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'll straight away start with the actual slips which is known as basic elasticity. All right. Now, guys, please listen to this first. Before going into basic elasticity, <clears throat> and again, I'm repeating this, <coughs> the topic I'm doing now is not uh, what I can say, forming a backbone or a base. No, this is hard and core required for your gate. All the time I have seen people practicing these gate numericals for one year, and they still have confusion in what I'm going to tell you now, which is sign convention. All right. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to understand what is known as stress tensor. So first of all, we should know what our stress is. So you apply everyone when someone says stress is right. People directly have this in mind. There's nothing but force divided by area. It's fine. It works. It is actually the basic definition. All right. But we need to understand what do you mean by stress tensor? because we'll be talking about 3D systems now, and it is not a vector quantity, it's a tensor. What is the difference? How we can write this in different formats and what is the sign convention, all right? Now, <clears throat> I'll start this. Hopefully we'll be understanding each and everything in this because I'll be taking multiple examples, and then I'll be forming the matrix, which you have already seen a lot uh, in all the standard textbooks. So what I've done is I've taken, let's say a cuboid, cuboid or a cube, any 3D body. All right. And I'm talking about real life. So this is 3D. So what I'm trying to tell you is this is X axis going in this direction. This is Y axis going upward. And this is Z axis. So this is our Cartesian coordinate system. And I have this is known as what I've drawn here. This is known as a 3D stress element. You should know these words because in your exams, they will say 2D stress element. They will say plane stress element. They will say plane strain element. All these words will be keep on changing, right? So this is nothing but a 3D stress element, which we're going to start. Now, what do you mean by this? Before marking stresses here, I want to remove one misconception and doubt from you people. And I want you people to respond on this. Can you people tell me when someone says, what are different kind of stresses present in a system? Can anyone tell me what kind of stresses you expect? How many kind of stresses you know, guys? What are these stresses? What kind of stresses you have? Any any word uh, which comes in your mind. People say, yes, Archisman told me, tensile stresses. People say, yes, tensile, compressive. Okay. People say bending stresses, shear stresses, thermal stresses. All these are catchy words which we have heard before, right? True? Internal stresses, okay.
Please just 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 give me one fraction of a second. Okay, yeah. So uh, I, I got many many axial stresses. Yes, different uh, words are coming: axial stresses, internal stresses, circumferential stresses. Maybe you have heard hoop stresses. Correct, right? Axial longitudinal stresses, bending stresses, thermal stresses. So from now on, after attending this lecture, I I'll, I'll give you one simple thing. Whenever someone says what kind of stresses you have in a system, so guys, it's simple. You have either a normal stress or you have either a shear stress. You cannot have two uh, other than this. So when I say stresses, there are normal stresses. And when I say stresses, the another kind of stress what we can have is a shear stress. Now, from now on, anyone says what kind of stresses do you know? Just say normal or shear. Nothing else. There is no other stress apart from this. Any name what you have given me or I have used the word will lie under these two only under spatial cases. So there will be only normal stress. There will be only shear stress. Now, what do you mean by this? A normal stress is one. I, I'm drawing a simple 3D plot just to make you understand. Let's say <clears throat> I have a system, something like this. Let's say I have a rod of rectangular cross section. I hope you can visualize this. All right, kind of a brick or something I'm taking. And you can easily say that this is the cross section. So it's a rectangular cross section. Similarly, it can be circular cross section. It can be an I section. It can be a C section. So if someone says, tell me uh, how an I section looks like. So it will be something like this. An I section beam. And I really hope you can imagine these things. Now. Something like this. I hope you can imagine now what I was trying to tell you. So this is an I section. Similarly, you have a C section. Uh, the reason of telling I and C because this is the most, uh, what I can say, <coughs> popular cross sections used in aircraft wings. And we will be studying about shear flow and shear center and all these things. So these are the different cross sections. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is when any stress acts exactly perpendicular to the cross section, to this red cross section, to this cross section, any stress which is perpendicular will be a normal stress. And in structures, we typically denote this as sigma. So any stress which is trying to pull your system either tensile or compressive. Now, if it is outside, then it is people say it is tensile. If it is compressing, then people say it is compressive. So tensile and compressive stress. But these are nothing but normal stresses only. Tensile and compressive stress are nature of it. All right. Similarly, these stresses you will see will come because of bending. So bending stresses are also type of normal stresses. Similarly, these stresses can come because of heat, that is thermal stresses, which is again part of normal stresses. So what I'm trying to tell you is the major name is normal stress, which can be of different types. It can be tensile, compressive, thermal, bending. Some people say internal, longitudinal stresses, axial stresses, different, different names, but all these are normal stresses. Now, any stress <clears throat> which acts parallel to the cross-section, kind of rubbing the cross-section, you can imagine this in your mind. So any stress, something like this, you see, it is not perpendicular. It is kind of rubbing this cross-section as if you're using a rubber into it is nothing but our <coughs> shear stress. Now in structures, people will name this as tau or sigma also sometimes depending upon the suffix. Now this is what the major thing we're going to learn today. But the major division, you know, what is a normal stress? What is a shear stress? How a normal stress looks like? How a shear stress looks like? This we should understand properly. So from now on, please don't use catchy words. Simply say normal or shear. All right. Now, what do you mean by and what is the sign convention, how it works? So I'll go to this uh, stress element now. This is 3D stress element. <clears throat> All right. Later, now itself, after finishing this, we'll be talking about 2D stress element, different kind of stress systems, which is very big step 
in understanding structures. So you will be really good after this lecture only. Uh, once you'll see all the numericals, right? The numerical starts like this only. A 3D stress element, a plane stress element, a plane strain element is subjected to this, 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 this load. So you know the element, half of the numerical is solved. Now, <clears throat> please help me with this. I will try to follow a color code. This is a very complicated diagram. It is very nicely given in Megzen, but difficult to understand. So if you see this face, right? It's a face of this block, this brick, which I have taken. All right. And now I want you people to understand, first of all, what is this plane? It's a plane, right? 2D plane, this red one. If you see this plane, if I'll roughly draw is somewhat here. And I hope, really, really hope that you people will agree. True. If I'll draw the whole same 3D brick element here, and I really, really assume that you understand. I'm talking about this face, correct? So which face is this in maths, guys? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. I got a good answer. Y, Z plane. Now, what do you mean by Y, Z plane? You need really need to understand these planes, guys. See, this plane will vary in Y. You see, its height is increasing, right? And height is nothing but Y direction. Correct. And it is also varying in Z direction. You see, here Z value is zero and it increases. So this is Y, Z plane. Now, the easier word to understand planes in maths, what people say when you talk about Y, Z plane, right? That is nothing but no, also known as X plane. Similarly, if someone says what is X, Y plane, that means its equation is Z plane. Now, what do you mean by this? I'll tell you a very simple thing so that we need not to do this in our exams all the time. When you see any plane, right? If you see this red plane, all right, what you see is which axis this plane is cutting. X, Y, Z plane means X remains constant. Perfect. So if you see this plane, which I have drawn below here is cutting X axis at a particular point, right? And that, that will remain fixed X equals to constant. So simple words is when someone says, which plane is this? You simply see, imagine that this is kind of a knife and which axis will going to cut. So if you see this plane, if I take, it will chop off or cut my X axis. All right. Now, once you know the plane, I'll be marking two stresses here. I'll go to a point here and perpendicular to it. I have a normal stress. So this is a normal stress. All right. The first suffix of this stress will tell you the plane on which it is acting. So if you see suffix is X means this stress Sigma is a normal stress acting on X plane and the second suffix will tell you in which direction it is going. And if you people agree, this stress, which is coming out, if you see, this is your X axis, right? So this is going in X direction. So Sigma X X <clears throat> is nothing but my normal stress acting on X plane going in X direction. Guys, please give me a quick nod. Is this fine? <clears throat> Perfect. Good, good, good. And guys, this is your responsibility. Now, please feel free to stop me at any point because we are starting early. We have to be very, very good. Let's finish your structures fear and concepts once and for all in one shot. So we should be very good in these understandings. Now, once this is clear, normal stress will not only act on, there will be shear stresses, right? Now guys, please listen to this here. The confusion starts for people. Now on this phase, if you see there is this stress I am marking, and if you see this is kind of rubbing this uh, plane, it's moving parallel to the uh, system. <clears throat> now what people will do in structures is sometime <laughs> which Megzen is doing, they'll name this stress as Sigma only. It's fine. 
So sigma doesn't mean that it is normal. It can be shear also. But how to identify? What is the difference? First suffix always tells you in which plane this stress is acting. So this is acting on X plane. It's fine. But now if you people agree and say yes or no, guys, this stress is going in Y direction. So sometimes people say this as sigma x y, and in many books you will find this as tau x y. This is only difference in terminology, but the suffix x y and x y will be same for everyone. I am again repeating this. First suffix tells you the plane which it is acting, and second suffix tells you in which direction your stresses are going, and hence it becomes x y. Now shear stress is one. How to identify which one is normal, which one is shear? Normal stresses, both the suffix will always be same. It will be x, x, y, y, z, z. Shear stresses will have two different suffix. It will be x, y, x, z, y, z, and so on. I will draw everything here. You need to understand. <clears throat> Let me do it for next stress because it is 3D, right? There is also a possibility that this stress will come. This is also parallel. Again, kind of rubbing it. So this will be sigma x going in z direction. So if you see on this face, which is yz plane, which is x plane, there are three stresses. One is a normal stress perpendicular to it. And there are two stresses covering both the directions. One going in y direction, one going in z direction. Now don't worry <laughs> why it is not, why this stress is not going down or why this stress is not going inside i will tell you this is what our sign convention is slowly i'll build this so you have written these stresses on this face it's fine step two let's understand one more system now what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the color code so let's go to this face now this is this top face right correct now if you see this face, can you ping me? What is the uh, equation for this uh, face now? I hope you people agree I'm talking about this face. This top surface of this block or a room. And which axis it is cutting? It is cutting Y axis, right? So this is Y plane, also known as XZ plane. Perfect. So now again, three stresses will come here. One stress, which will directly is perpendicular to this and we know the sign convention now sigma acting on y plane going in y direction perfect and there will be two shear stresses covering the other two directions now what is the shear stress guys there will be a shear stress acting in this direction x direction and i will say sigma acting on y plane going in x direction Similarly, one more stress will be present. Sigma acting on Y plane going in Z direction. And similarly, guys, Sigma Y X and Sigma Y Z. Perfect. Now, if you people agree, <clears throat> you have six faces. Correct. And each, <coughs> each face, you can draw these kind of stresses. I'm going to do it for one more face. And then maybe you can try it out for different faces later because I need to form stress tensor. Now I'll go for another uh, color code in this. Let's go to a different code. So let's talk about this face now. All right, facing towards, uh, facing you, this face. So if you people see or agree, this is cutting Z axis. So this is Z plane also known as XY plane. And if I draw stress system here, there will be one stress, which will be exactly coming out, which I hope you people agree is nothing but Sigma acting in Z plane going in Z direction. And guys, anywhere you feel you need a repetition, please let me know. I'll, I'll try to clear it. And then in the other two directions, there will be shear stresses, which will rub this surface parallel to the cross section tangential stresses. So there is one stress, which is sigma Z Y. And there is another stress, which is sigma Z X and so on. <clears throat> 
So I have done it for three phases. I can do it for all six phases, but I want to introduce the confusion now. All right, up till point, up till this point, I have seen people understood this very easily, and they will like this, and they'll understand this that it is very much clear. But I want to introduce that uh, concept here itself so that you people can understand. All right, let's consider this phase. Let's consider this bottom phase. Let me change the color. Let's consider this bottom phase. So which plane is this, guys? This bottom plane? <clears throat> y plane, right? Y axis. It is cutting Y axis if you see. So, <clears throat> yes. Now, guys, please listen to this very carefully. This is new and the last part. Then we'll draw a tensor out of it. One stress will come exactly perpendicular to it. This is exactly pointing downwards, like gravity acting downwards, right? And this will be a normal stress acting on Y plane going in Y direction. All right, same thing. Plane and in which direction it is going. It's fine. Then there will be a shear stress. Now, this is the important thing. I'm marking this shear stress like this sigma acting on Y plane going in X direction. Sigma acting on Y plane going in Z direction. <clears throat> True. Now, <coughs> you please listen to this why I have reversed the direction. This is the major thing I want you people to understand. All right. Now the thing is this. Okay. If you compare two Y axis, this top one, this is Y plane, right? And this bottom one, this is also Y plane. On both these planes, normal stresses are sigma YY and sigma YY. Correct? But if you see one is going upward, another one is going downward. You should never use these words. These are coming outside tensile. So these are positive stresses for us. So you draw any face, not only top, bottom, left, right, front, back, any face, a positive normal stress is one, which is now the catchy word tensile in nature. So if it is coming out, it is tensile and we'll consider it as positive. If it is trying to crush the body, it is inside compressive, then it is negative. So if you see, don't, I've seen people saying, sir, this is going towards plus Y axis. This is going towards minus Y axis. So this below one should be negative. No, any stress going in any direction. I'm not interested. It should be tensile. That's it. Then it is considered to be positive. One thing. Now, the second confusion I've seen people having is, <clears throat> sir, on top surface, Sigma YX is going on right hand side and on bottom surface, Sigma YX is going on left side. Agreed. This is a very good doubt. This is the whole sign convention. Now I'm giving you a statement, which believe me, if you'll read hundred books, right? It will not be clear unless and until you understood the statement. Now, a shear stress is positive. All right. <clears throat> it depends. In which direction your normal stress is going? Guys, please listen to this, what I'm saying. If you see the top part now, this sigma y is going in positive y direction. If I'll remove this now so that I can draw the coordinate system again. This is x, this is y, and this is z. So if you see on top surface, sigma y is going towards plus y. Correct? If your normal stress is going towards plus Y, then all your shear stresses on that plane should go towards plus X and plus Z. And now if you see, this shear stress is going towards plus X and this shear stress is going towards plus Z because my normal stress was going towards plus Y. If you understood that it's fine. If not, let me go to the bottom phase and it will be clear. Now, if you see the bottom phase, my normal stress is positive. Perfectly fine. It is positive. But if you see the direction, 
it is going towards minus y. And now if you want to draw shear stresses, you have to draw it going towards minus x and going towards minus z. Guys, believe me, this is an important concept. If it is clear, then please give me a quick nod, every one of you. If, it, if you have any doubt, then please tell me. I'll repeat these statements. Is it fine? <clears throat> yeah, fine, fine. Okay, repeat the bottom part. Could you please repeat? I'll repeat the statement again. <clears throat> Just see where your normal stress is going. And uh, yeah, yeah, Rugma, uh, Archishman, please, guys, uh, if it is clear, please let me know. Where your normal stress is going. When your normal stress is going towards plus y are going upward, right? And what is this upward? This is plus y direction, right? Then my shear stresses should go towards plus x and plus z. When your normal stresses are going towards minus y, then your shear stresses should go towards minus z. You see minus z is inside, right? And minus x means left hand side. Is it clear now, Rugma, Achishman, other people? <clears throat> stresses, normal stresses will be positive if they are tensile. It will be negative if they are compressive. Shear stresses will be positive if they follow the sign convention which I have drawn. So these are positive shear stresses. I'll give you many, many examples. I know this will give you slight, slight confusion. But in <clears throat> once I'll start numericals on this right and give you a 2D stress element today itself, it will be clear. You will be playing with these terms. As of now, what I'm telling you is you should write this. This is nothing but our sign convention. Whatever directions you have drawn here are positive stress directions. I know it is slightly confusing. I'll I'll explain this with the help of uh, the better diagram, which is very easy to relate to the stress element. But before that, I want to see the reality, which is 3D. 3D is a real life, right? <clears throat> okay. Now, if you people agree, can you anyone tell me how many stresses you people expect you have in the system? You have six spaces. How many stresses you have in the system? Anyone? Okay. So if you see, guys, this is sigma y, which is same as sigma y. This is sigma yx, which is same as sigma yx. This is sigma yz, which is same as sigma yz. So two opposite faces have same stresses. So three and three are repeated. Similarly, you will have three stresses acting on this face, which will be same as this face stresses. And similarly, on outside and inside. So ideally speaking, you have nine stresses unknown. Correct? And now what we're going to do is, I'm going to draw, <clears throat> which is known as a 3D stress tensor. So whenever you have more terms, right? Always we want to go into a matrix form. What is this matrix form? All right. <clears throat> Guys, please listen to this carefully. Everyone knows what is matrix, correct? So when you are talking about a 3D stress element, your matrix will be a 3 by 3 matrix. When you talk about 2D stress element, it will be a 2 by 2 matrix. All right. First important thing to remember. Next is in matrix, we know first suffix represents row, second suffix represents column. So in your mind, you should read it in this way. Let's say this is X column, Y column, Z column. This is in your mind. And this is X row, Y row, Z row. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill stresses here. So what are these stresses? Sigma, 
x rho x column sigma x rho y column sigma x rho z column similarly sigma y rho x column sigma y rho y column sigma y rho z column sigma z rho x column z rho y column z rho z column so this i have done by because i know some small portion of matrices i have done it before so i have written this but i don't want to be, be, be do it again and again the things we should understand is if you now you see right this is diagonal elements of this stress tensor are nothing but normal stresses so if you see there are three normal stresses acting on the system sigma x sigma y and sigma z so there are three normal stresses and if you see the upper triangular matrix upper triangular part and the lower triangular part these are nothing but my shear stresses so we have as of now guys please don't learn this i i i am going to prove equilibrium equation in complementary nature afterwards but as of now <laughs> what i am showing here is that diagonal terms are normal stresses in our stress tensor and off diagonal terms are nothing but our shear stresses so if you see there are three stresses normal and six stresses in shear and in total in stress tensor 3d stress tensor you have nine unknown stresses give me a quick nod guys is this clear now perfect clear okay <clears throat> but we need to move into some detailed analysis of this all right now what i am going to do is i am going to prove one or two very important relation the detailed proof will be present in your material books i will try to do it now itself but usually typically in gate classes people try to avoid this and give as a statement i don't want to do it because i really want you to be strong in this because if you are good in this you will be good in entire structures now what i am going to do is you already know 3d body right now i am going to draw a 2d stress element and you people will help me in this now now when i'll draw 2d stress element first of all 2d means only lamina only a face there is no depth all right and hence i only have x direction and i only have y direction there is no z in this that's why the reason it is known as 2d right and you have seen most of your gate numericals will work on 2d or plane stress or plane strain something like this we'll come to slowly slowly what is plane stress what is plane strain and so on so you have a 2d stress element now so don't forget that there is no z you should not write any single z term in this all right just a minute guys <clears throat> okay so let's mark stresses here so on this face on this face if you see this line will cut my x axis right so a stress which is normal to it will be sigma x going in x direction this is a normal stress and because <clears throat> there is no z in this guys please listen to this carefully so there will be only one shear stress acting here if you see this is parallel to this line kind of rubbing to it tangential and this will be sigma acting on x plane going in y direction i hope you agree and there is no stress z which is going inside or outside if you see in 3d there was one normal one upward and the third was in z direction we don't have this now in 2d this is an approximation guys in reality you have depth you don't have a sheet of paper working in aircraft right there are thin walled but it is not 2d it is actually real life is 3d <clears throat> same thing i can say here let me not change the color code sorry 
So this is also my X plane. Normal stress to it is X going in X direction. Now, but now you should understand this, that <clears throat> on this left-hand side face, sigma XX is positive, I agree. But it is going in negative X, right? If you see, it is going in negative X. So now if you want to draw your shear stress, you should draw it same shear stress acting on X plane going in Y direction. That's the sign convention I explained you in 3D. So when your stresses, normal stresses are going in plus Y, your shear stresses should go in plus Y. If your normal stresses are going towards minus X, your shear stresses should go towards minus uh, Y. Okay, let me <clears throat> go to the another face. If you see this top face, this face will cut this Y axis, right? So a stress normal to it will be Sigma Y going in Y plane. And because it is going towards plus Y, I should draw my shear stress here as Sigma Y going in X direction. So I'm not doing anything fancy here. If you understood 3D stress element, believe me, this is piece of cake for you because it is very easy to write, right? Now, same thing, sigma y y. Now I'm going towards minus y. So I'll mark my shear stress here as sigma y going in x direction. That's it. So now <clears throat> for 2D stress element, if I want to write its tensor, First of all, I should know that it is a two by two matrix because it is 2D, it is two by two. If it is 3D, it is three by three. Diagonal elements will represent normal stresses. So this is sigma XX, this is sigma YY. And off diagonal elements represent shear stresses. So this is sigma XY, this is sigma YX. Same thing guys. Third axis is gone now. So your normal stresses are diagonal elements and your shear stresses are off diagonal elements. So now if you see, there are four unknowns in 2D and there were nine unknowns in 3D, which is not true. This is not true. I'm going to prove some quantities here. But as of now, I want you people to tell me and reply, is this clear? What do you mean by a 3D stress element? What is the sign convention? What do you mean by a 2D stress element? What is the sign convention? Always in structures, when we read theory and we try to understand equations, right? We definitely will have confusion. So any topic will be cleared around 70, 80%, 20-30% will always be what if this happens? What is this? What is this? Always this confusion will come into picture. But once we do some numericals on this, right, then it will be clear. What do you mean by plus 50 megapascal? Why it is going left hand side and you're taking this negative? So many cases will come. We'll sl slowly build this. But please respond to me up till now. Is this clear for everyone? <clears throat> okay. Okay, <clears throat> good. So at least we know the stress elements now. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a derivation here. Although I never do this derivation, but still I can give it, uh, <clears throat> we can try it out. But the equations are asked repetitively in your gate exam. There are like three, four questions exactly on the equation I'm going to derive. All right, now what I'm going to do is, <clears throat> and you will understand this basic now. I will take 2D stress element as a reference. Let's say this is, let me do it in center only so that you people can easily see this. So 2D means I only have X and Y. Correct? Yeah. So 2D stress element will look something like this. So this is my 2D stress element. All right. And let's say <clears throat> this is of very infinite symbol length. So this is a very small element you're talking about. This is Delta X mm -hmm. and let's say it height is Delta Y. Again, this derivation is definitely not needed for solving gate numericals because 
final equations anyhow we need to learn but you should you will should know from where these are coming it will not take more than 5 minutes so it is a good thing to have and then we will spend more times in equations and understanding those equations and solving those numericals on those equations now if you you all of us know that if i take a 2d stress element right on this face there will be a stress sigma xx and there will be a stress which is sigma correct x going in y direction similarly on bottom face i will have sigma yy and there will be a stress here sigma yx i hope this is not very uh, big calculations we have already seen this but now for derivation sake what we're going to do is this if i go to the right hand side guys please listen to this carefully <clears throat> you will find this term so what this term represents in maths this is sigma x plus some small change in sigma x when you move in x direction into delta x now i know this is confusing people don't like these terms it is coming but what i'm trying to tell you is this is let, let's imagine in your mind just for your understanding and easiness let's say this delta x and delta x got cancelled out so what we are saying is small change in delta x so what this represents what i'm trying to show you here when you are on one face of the body your stress is sigma x this one sigma x x now guys one more important note we should not always write sigma x x sigma y y normal stresses you can only give one suffix also but for shear stresses you should always give two suffix so this should be x y this should be y x two suffix are needed but for normal stresses from now on i will not write sigma x x i will write sigma x only it is clear because both suffix are repetitive right if one face is having sigma xx another face we are assuming that it is having slightly different value it let's say sigma x is 10 then 10 plus 0.1 some small value and it depends upon what how far you are going depends upon this delta x same thing i am going to do for shear stress so this is sigma xy which was acting on my left face plus small change in this sigma xy when you move from one end to another end and you need to cross this delta x right it will be crystal clear in next 10 minutes please be with me and finish this entire topic this 10 minutes you should listen and you will be good and you will be actually seeing the equations which you have seen before on water all right now i'll do the same thing with this part on this bottom surface you have sigma y now what you do is you climb up this whole body so stresses is sigma y y plus small changes but now i am moving in y direction right so this is delta y and similarly <clears throat> this on bottom it was sigma y x now on top it will be sigma y x plus small change in sigma y x divided by delta y into delta x sorry sorry yeah 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 this is my bad guys please 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 change this this is going upward right yeah sorry 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 my bad yeah thank you thank you ajishman yeah yeah vijay thank you so these are the stresses stress elements we have assumed that there is a small change in the stress values now guys i want you to please tell me and understand this if this body is in equilibrium what do you mean by equilibrium all the forces in x direction are zero all the forces in y direction are zero meaning my body should remain stationary it should not move meaning if this body is in equilibrium right if someone is pulling it with sigma xx on left hand side right hand side it should also be pulled by the same force but if you see sigma xx plus sum if this difference is present then this body will start moving towards right hand side right then it will not be in equilibrium this is my physical understanding let's see what equations are saying so what i am going to do is i am going to develop 
which is I'm again repeating this. There are some four or five numericals in your gate exam on this topic. What is known as equilibrium equations. And I just want to show from where they are coming and what is the physical significance. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put all the forces in X direction equals to zero. Net force in X direction should be zero, right? Left should be equals to right. All should balance out. Then only we have a body which is not moving. Now let's follow simple sign convention. But now the beautiful part is forces. And what you have drawn here is a stress system, correct? So we need to convert these forces, these stresses into forces now, right? Now tell me what is this force? You people help me. Sigma XX, I'm talking about this phase now, Sigma XX. And you know, stress into area is force, right? So let's say, let's, let's name this. Yeah, any, any, any name you can give. So <clears throat> this is delta Y. And because it is 2D, right? Let's say depth is one. So if you want to convert this Sigma XX into a force, and I hope you people agree, force is nothing but stress into area. Now, why I have given negative sign? Because it is going towards negative X. If it is not clear, it will be clear in a few minutes, guys. Now, <clears throat> Which other force is acting in X direction? If you see the next force, which is acting in this X direction is this, this force, right? It is acting on which face? It is acting on face this, whose length is delta Y and depth is one. And it is going in plus Y direction. So I'll say plus sign to it. So I'll apply this plus. What is the stress? Sigma XX plus dou by dou X of sigma xx into del x into delta y into one. So this is stress multiplied by area is force. This force is acting on right hand side. This is stress. This is stress multiplied by area is force which is acting on left hand side. And if your body is in equilibrium, this should be equals to zero, but no. If you go here, you see there is one more force going in X direction, which is this. And there is one more force going in X direction, which is this. I'll write those terms now. Let's take bottom one. Stress is sigma YX. So minus sigma YX. And it is acting on this phase. Its length is delta X and delta X into one plus this top one, this multiplied by delta X into one going in positive direction. So I'll say plus Sigma Y X plus do by do X of Sigma Y X into del X into one and all these things. I'm not interested which one is shear, which one is normal. All the forces should balance out. Then only my body will not move, not towards left or towards right. It's kind of a tug of war. If it is equilibrium, both should be same on left and right. Now, if I do simple maths here, right? Plus minus multiply divide. I hope you people agree and everyone should point out if they are clear. This sigma X into delta Y into one, this term will got canceled out with this term. If you see, this will be multiplied with this, right? And this term will be canceled out with this term. You can see inside. So what is left out terms? Left out terms are dou by dou X of sigma XX. Correct? Okay. Let me write that also if you need into delta X into delta Y plus dou by dou x of sigma y x into delta x delta y is equals to zero. I have missed one delta x here. This is delta y and this is delta y. Sorry, I missed that. You can see 
this stress is this stress is this one only right you just need to copy this one i have missed that i have written x here it's fine it should be y and it is multiplied with delta y this should be equals to zero <clears throat> now everyone knows it is equals to zero right so i can even eliminate these two terms and finally what i got dou by dou x of sigma xx plus dou by dou x sorry dou by dou y of sigma y x is equals to zero. I know you must have definitely seen this in Megzen, but now you will understand what is the meaning of this. Guys, what I'm trying to tell you is this sigma x should be balanced by this sigma x provided this part, which I have assumed a small change this sigma y x is balanced by this sigma y x provided this additional part which we have assumed these two additional part should cancel out each other they should not add up so it's something like sigma x should balance sigma x sigma y should balance sigma y sigma y x should balance sigma y x sigma x y should balance sigma x y everyone should be happy meaning this should be present there should be no delta terms here there should be no delta terms. Even if delta terms are present, this delta and this delta should cancel out each other. So one should go in one direction, other one should cancel it. This is what the meaning of equilibrium equation is, right? What do you mean by this? There should be no change on left and right side forces. Everyone should be balanced out each other. But if you open Megzen, right, you will not see these equations. You will see 3D stress equations. And you will see more, much more bigger terms. Now I want to generalize this for your gate. I have taken help of 2D stress element to make you understand things. But no, 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 Tushar. No, okay. Uh, one question asked by Tushar is both sigma xx and sigma yx are in same direction. How it will be balanced? So this is what we have assumed, Tushar. What I'm trying to tell you is if this is plus 2, this part, if this part is part is plus two, this part should be minus two. So it is something like sigma xx plus some change, sigma yx, some change should be negative. That change should be negative. Or it both can be zero also. You understood, right? Yeah. So these are not, don't assume that they're going, both going in right. So these part, I'm saying, let's say five minus two and here i am saying let's say 12 plus two so this plus two and minus two which is the additional problematic effect will cancel out right okay good 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 now <clears throat> i'm writing the equilibrium equation which you will see in megzen and this is the actual equation we will remember and many numericals are asked on this equilibrium equations generalized now generalize this means i will generalize this for 3d now how to remember this easily if you see we'll generalize this only these two we got so how i'll read this stresses going in x direction plus stresses going in y direction should be equals to zero let me write that term here so dou by dou x any stresses going in x direction, normal stresses, change plus dou by dou y of sigma. If you see, you can directly see here sigma y x plus if it's a 3D problem, you will have this term also plus capital X equals to zero. Now what I'm doing is I'm introducing because you're studying, you're doing good higher studies, right? So you, now I'm introducing some complicated terms here. Now, please listen to this. What is the meaning of each term? Any change <coughs> of normal stresses going in X direction, any change of shear stresses going in X direction, any change of shear stresses. If you see second suffix tells you the direction, right? Any stress going in X direction, whether it is normal or shear, plus these are known as this capital X represents 
बॉडी फोर्सेस पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम नेवर एवर दे हैव गिवन दिस इन योर गेट एग्जाम बट इफ यू रीड एनी बुक यू विल फाइंड दिस नाउ व्हाट दिस मींस बॉडी फोर्सेस सिंपल एग्जांपल इज वेट so it's not always like you are pulling it sometime weight also act right but typically it won't act in x direction it will act in y direction vertically downwards but let's say if we have some body forces i'll consider that also so your body forces your external forces all should cancel out each other in such a way that your whole net movement in x direction should not be present that's the meaning of equilibrium equations so whether it is normal whether it is shear shear body forces everyone should cancel out each other and this is known as equilibrium equation in x direction i'll come to this per one per unit volume part in like 2 3 minutes let's learn this here itself what is second equilibrium equation so this is equilibrium equation in y direction now all right what is easiest way when you are talking about y direction sigma y y is with respect to y when you are talking about this guys first i'll always write x this is x y second suffix tells you about y direction right this is z y divided by do z plus if you have any body forces in y direction please equate it to zero i hope you understood the process if it is not clear i'll i'll simply explain this if you see second suffix everywhere here right stress is going in y direction y direction y direction y direction should cancel out each other if you want to write same equation for z direction it will be this shear stresses acting in z plane shear stresses acting in z plane and normal stresses acting in z plane plus if you have any body forces everything should cancel out each other so this is the reason i have given you in this format if you see these three terms right kind of just this is not a rule but i'm given this so that you understand if if you see this right this this and this are normal only uh, the normal stresses and these are nothing but my shear stress terms so if your body is in equilibrium this is x direction equilibrium this is y direction equilibrium and this is z direction equilibrium always my body should be in equilibrium so these equations should be satisfied so you know each and every term in this you know what is sigma x you know what is sigma x y y x and also on so you have written three equilibrium equations and mostly people directly give these equations and ask to learn you know from where they are coming we have done it for an easier case which is for 2d stress element and you end up with this and then you have generalized this now body forces you know are nothing but same simple example is weight acting downwards which is a body force acting on the body at centroid the why per unit volume word come came here if you see simple maths right what is unit of sigma x x case i hope you people agree and i am i will go in detail of units what is mega pascal what is newton per mm square and so on but if i'll simply say stresses typically are calculated in newton per mm square right force divided by area and if you see in denominator you also have x x is length right change in length which is also having a unit mm so it becomes newton per mm cube and i hope you people agree this is force per unit volume now and hence you have added up capital x saying this is body force it's fine but it should be per unit volume then only you can add apple plus apple plus apple plus apple you cannot add apple plus orange right it should be of same units so any term here is having unit of newton per mm cube which is nothing but force per unit volume and hence capital x capital y and capital z all are nothing but body forces per unit volume going in that direction guys this is very very important slide believe me you will find so many interesting good questions in this uh, in your gate numericals right so you need to be very much clear in this 
please tell me is this part clear any confusion any small thing you want me to repeat tell me i'll repeat that term okay <clears throat> perfect so if this is clear this is the second step and we are done almost guys in 10 minutes we are done with this uh, part of stress tensor now second derivation which definitely i don't want to spend time in this derivation but you should know from where it is coming now the second thing what we can do is you can take moment about this point from all these stresses now i know it is difficult so this is the reason i don't want to spend but you should give it a try if it doesn't work we will do it together tomorrow again and if you have doubt we'll do the derivation also <clears throat> if you see movement will be created by this force into this length force into perpendicular distance this force this force and this force and movement should be zero right for equilibrium movement about any point should be equals to zero so if if you people agree you have done force equilibrium here now what i am asking you to do is do movement equilibrium take movement of that particular stress system stresses at center of gravity i should use the word centroid and equate it to zero once you do that now i am not doing it because it doesn't make sense to repeat these things the output is we will <laughs> came to know that the shear stresses are complementary in nature meaning sigma xy will be exactly equals to sigma yx sigma xz will be exactly equals to sigma zx and sigma yz will be exactly equals to sigma zy i again repeat this this can be proved just by taking a moment about that particular point moment equilibrium equated to zero you will get this relation this is already shown in your books so uh, all standard textbooks also in your material books also so it will be clear if you want you can give it a try this part is known as complementary nature of shear stresses now what do you mean by complementary nature of shear stresses that sigma xy is also same as sigma yx now if you go to any stress element now just for your understanding i am doing this sigma xy you have just now proved that it is equals to sigma yx you can check it here also sigma yx is equals to sigma xy so what is what do you mean by complementary nature of shear stresses meaning on two perpendicular planes shear stresses are same in magnitude but opposite in nature opposite in nature means head to head if you see they if you see this stress head will meet this stress head this stress head will meet this stress head it is never possible to have different values on two perpendicular planes so it cannot be like this is 10 and this is 20 no it is not possible and it is not possible that if this is sigma xy you can have sigma xy going in this direction no it can never follow it is equal and opposite on two mutually perpendicular planes which is known as complementary nature of shear stresses so sigma xy is equals to sigma yx and these things how we derived this and this is a your gate question how complementary nature of shear stresses are derived it is derived from moment equilibrium now just 2 minutes and we are really really good to go can you tell me now in 3d stress element what is an output guys what we understood we have just now proved that the sigma xy 
should be equals to sigma y x. This sigma x z should be equals to sigma z x, and this sigma y z is equals to sigma z y. Meaning, guys, I hope everyone agrees on this now. Meaning, stress tensor is a symmetric matrix. You see, upper triangular part is exactly same as lower triangular part. So now what I am going to do is, so can you tell me how many unknowns are here now? How many total in a 3D, in real life, in one stress, how many unknowns you have? You have six unknowns, not nine, it is six now. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to summarize whatever we have done today by doing this. So what is our 3D stress element vector, guys? Stress is equals to, from now on, I'm not going to write this again and again. This I'll say sigma x, sigma y, and sigma z. No need to give second suffix. Second, I'll simply write this as sigma x, y. So this should be sigma x, y. No need to write y, x also. Just write easy thing, whatever you remember. This is, let's say, x, z. So this is x, z. This is y, z. This is y, z. So you have three normal stresses and you have three shear stresses unknown. So in total, you have six unknown stresses in a 3D stress element out of which three are normal and three are shear. So later we are going to solve these equations. We have to solve for these six unknowns, right? The, in the end, the motive of an engineer is to calculate stresses acting on the system. So for a 3D system, I need to calculate six unknowns. Can you please summarize this for 2D stress element? A 2D stress element will be a 2 by 2 matrix. Diagonal elements will be sigma x, sigma y. And shear stress element will be sigma x, y, which is same as sigma x, y. So if you people agree, there are two normal stresses. And there is only one shear stress, which is sigma x, y or tau x, y, whatever you write. So this is three unknown stresses for a 2D stress element. Two are normal and one is shear. Guys, please tell me, is this part clear to all of you? You people understood this slightly. I again, don't want you to master this topic in first lecture itself, but at least you should not have a fear now that what is this drawn, why it is drawn. Definitely, we have not solved numerical on this as of now, but you will be slowly, slowly understanding this and you will be easily learning this and uh, so solving numericals on this part. Is it clear? Can I expect uh, this is clear for all? Okay, <clears throat> just to, okay, I, I'm not solving numericals as of now. So just to wrap this up, just to make you people feel good and to understand whether you people understood this part or not, I'll ask. Or I should not say I should ask, I will give you these names. So if you find something like this, let's say there is a body. And you find this. How many stresses are acting on this? There is only one normal stress, right? All right. There is no sigma 2. There is no sigma. You can write sigma x also if you like. What I'm trying to show here is that there is only one stress going in one direction. It is only normal stress. If you see, there is no shear stress. There is no stress in y direction or two direction. There is no stress in z direction. So people say that this stress system is known as uniaxial stress system. Uni means only one direction. Axial means that one direction is nothing but a normal stress. So I hope it is clear. What do you mean by a uniaxial stress system? Again, this is not for you to learn. This is 
I'm just framing it so that you people can say that yes, this is I this I understood. Similarly, if someone says, let's say, biaxial stress system. Now the name itself, you know what they're trying to say. So you have any stress element. So you're simply saying that there will be bi means in two direction, axial means. So this is, it should be something like this. Let's say it have sigma one and let's say it has sigma two. That's it. There should be no stress in third direction and there should be no shear stress and hence the name bi axial. And hence, I hope you understand the meaning of triaxial also. Triaxial means in all the three directions. Guys, <coughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Is this clear for everyone? Clear? Perfect. So guys, again, uh, I told you this is the first lecture uh, in which we have started with aircraft structures and we have uh, started with basic elasticity. Tomorrow, again, same time, we'll be meeting and we'll continue with this topic and we'll uh, do this for finishing entire basic elasticity. And then once this is done tomorrow, I'll try to pull out some numericals also in lecture two, and then we will have a better understanding. And um, tomorrow we'll try to understand what is uh, principal stresses, how they are calculated, what is the way derivations and why we usually do it. I hope this is clear for everyone. If you have any doubt, definitely you can post in group. Uh, you can uh, ask me, uh, you can uh, give me a message, you can WhatsApp me and uh, better to post in group so that once you have a doubt, everyone get an answer to it. And uh, I hope it is fine clear. All right. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. Take care.